Welcome everyone to 30 Screams or Less, a horror movie podcast where we review horror movies in 30 minutes or less so you don't have to. We're back from a week vacation. That is partially my fault. Sorry, not sorry. I went to PAX East in Boston, Massachusetts, a video game convention. A lot of cool stuff though. I got interviewed by like a horror video game company on horror video games. I was talking about Dead by Daylight shit like that. But yeah, we're back now. We're going to fucking into this today's movie we're going to be talking about is called anything for jackson it's directed by justin dick written by keith cooper starring sheila mccarthy as audrey julian richings as henry Const- mental Ment- uh jeez constantina mantelos as shannon josh crudas as ian and basically fuck everyone else the movie is about a brave satanist couple Kidnapping a pregnant woman so they can use an ancient spell book to put their dead grandson's spirit into the unborn child, but end up summoning more than they bargained for. So a lot of craziness about to talk about, all that good stuff. So with that in mind, 30 Screams or Less starts now. Corey, what do you think about anything for Jackson? Dude, I'm so glad that we're doing this podcast. I think I said it before because I've had all these movies on my list to watch for so long and I just haven't done it because I'm fat and lazy. Now I have actual like homework to do during the week. So this movie was, I loved it, dude. This was as like terrifying. It wasn't scary, but it was terrifying to say the least. And everything I had read about it said that's exactly what it was. Like it just makes you feel uneasy. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that's what I got out of this movie. And fun fact, the guy who directed it, this is his first movie. He is known for only making Hallmark Christmas movies. So this is quite a step for him. That's so fucking weird. You go from making these feel good Hallmark movies and all of a sudden nightmare fuel. Trying out different things, stretching your director chops, if you will, because it is a massive departure from what Justin Dick is uh, used to doing. Yeah, like he goes from making Hallmark Christmas movies to making a movie about what, you guessed it, a dead kid. (laughs) Again. Oh my God. Welcome to 30 Screams of Last, where we just talk about dead kid movies. That's the whole plot. I mean, this this couple, (laughs) this uh, not even couple, grandparents trying to resurrect uh, their dead grandson. That's exactly it. That's the best way to describe this movie. Obviously, we're going to go way into this, but it's... This movie starts off zero to 60 and the way it starts off, I find it hilarious because it sounds a lot like, or it looks a lot like they're waiting for their kid to show up from, I don't know, fucking college or whatever. And she's like, oh, she's here. And of course, as soon as they open the door, we see Shannon getting dragged in, kidnapped by the grandfather and obviously the grandmother helping. And they bring her upstairs, they lock her in the room, handcuff her to bed, all that stuff. And it starts off just like that. There's no slow burn, nothing. We just go right into it. I was a bit confused on that part. Like uh, Henry and Audrey were having breakfast or whatever. And then she says she's here. And then they go outside. Like, how did Shannon get there? Those were some of the qu- things I was questioning too. How are these people just getting away with these weird things and no one's noticing at all? How do you like, get a pregnant woman? Like this guy, he's an older guy. It's not like he can just easily manhandle someone around, especially with Shannon. I wouldn't say she's a bigger girl or anything, but he's got to be 30 pounds less than her, maybe more. And he's just manhandling this girl into the house. That didn't add up to me. Yeah, that that didn't add up how he was able to do that and just how she got there. Because it's not like she was drugged. She was awake, just being dragged into the house. Yeah, they didn't want to drug her at all, obviously. They wanted the fetus and everything to be tip-top shape because they want to bring their son Jackson back via like the baby as the host, if you will. So to have Shannon be dragged into the house like that by two elderly people. It's movie magic. doesn't matter. Yeah, it's movie magic. It's their. It's like, a, um, it's like a Disney movie. Yeah, exactly. When you take the little wand and you say, this is the Disney channel. Bing. You know, that kind of deal. Yeah. Screaming girl getting dragged into the house under the. That guy was like 70 years old, too. Yeah. But still, he's not he like a fucking bodybuilder. Like, they didn't even tell us about that. 
straight steroids. He's a doctor. He must have access to that stuff. He probably was roid raging getting her into the house. Yeah, him and Sylvester Stallone hang out on the weekends. Oh, exactly. Yeah, they're just, you know, shoot HGH into each other's ass cheeks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, they're both like, what, the same age, probably? Vesta Stallone's getting up there, and yeah, he's got to be doing something because he's still massive at his age. Dude, he's like openly said he uses HGH. He fucking Power loves bars. It. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, so, it, so, dude, when they dragged Shannon up into the bedroom there and handcuffed her to the bed, and then Audrey and Henry were reading Shannon that letter that they weren't going to hurt her or unborn child, like that made me so fucking uncomfortable because <laughs> they did it so calmly they oh, were so dude. calm and especially audrey dude her like facial expressions what she's doing and the way she's acting just don't add up no no the whole thing is bonkers because yeah it's almost like she's reading a letter in a freaking intervention just being like just want to let you know that we're not gonna hurt you or the baby i was like what the fuck is going on right now i was watching it with my girlfriend and we're just listening to it and i'm like this is bonkers you know, yeah, because Shannon's going ballistic, obviously. And at that point, she's already a cup down, which, by the way, I find a little weird the way they set up the cuffs. They had the leather straps and then the cuffs cuffed to the leather strap. Like, why do that? That just is an opportunity for her to get out of it. No problem. But she does later in the movie. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's just, <laughs> she's just, just like, I'm sense. taking these off now. And she just leaves. Yeah, well, she does the whole, like, biting into the uh, leather strap deal, and she's, like, deuces. She's, like, ready to get out of there. But if you're just going to have her cuffed to the bed, why not just cuff her straight to the bed? You are cut out the middleman. No reason for it. Yeah, I, I <laughs> that was pretty funny. I didn't notice that until you brought it up. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too, as I'm watching it. I'm like, you know, if I was in this situation and I was having to strap someone down to a bed and try to raise my dead grandson into their fetus, I would think I'd be a little bit more cautious about them getting out of the bed. Nope, more movie magic. Yeah, exactly. Movie magic. And by the way, not planning on doing that. I am not a grandfather or a father for that matter. So we got plenty of time for anything crazy like that to happen. <laughs> Perfect. So how about them using the fucking Necronomicon? I mean, that's not what it was, but that's what it looked like. Dude, it was borderline the Necronomicon. It didn't have the face and everything to it, but it when they were reading it and everything, you were like, yeah, bringing, yeah, that's bringing fucking crows back to life. Oh, yeah, that was an interesting scene. Oh, wait, it wasn't a crow at first, was it? Or is it just like a regular ass bird? No, it was a crow. It was like a dead crow in the middle of a park. And then. Oh, OK. Audrey yeah, so... was like, watch this. And then she just brings this fucking dead crow back to life and the thing flies away. And Henry's like, wow, that's amazing. Good... Yeah, it works. Yeah, she like she picked her finger a little bit and she's throwing blood onto the thing like the power of Christ compels you type deal. And then she started reading all sorts of shit from the we'll call it the Nepcon and the bird came to life. Yeah, that's that. Then they did that. Um, they went to their little cult meeting for the first time too. Right after that, <laughs> you know what I thought it was initially? I thought it was an AA meeting because they met <laughs> with. <laughs> I'm thinking they met some fucking satanic kid at an AA meeting, and they borrowed a book from him or whatever, and they're going back to the meeting. Nope, they walk into a freaking library and. Lo and behold, there's a room and there's like snacks set up. I don't know, fucking donuts. Or I was going to say, it's set up exactly like an AA meeting. Exactly. Maybe have they some, do have that to have it look fresh like fresh coffee that. and some fresh donuts. Exactly. I didn't right see before we read this dead book here, this <laughs> fucking Necronomicon thing. Yes. Please have some hot chocolate, fresh refreshments, snacks before we summon some sort of evil demon. Before we praise, what were they? Hail Satan over and over. It was like Hail Satan for like 15 minutes. I was laughing at that part. It was so bad. It was funny because it's not something you expect from an elderly couple. You expect them to go in and like I said, it felt like the AA meeting, but they go in, they throw the freaking garbs on. I don't know. I'm just spitballing. Undertaker's Druids? Point. Yeah, Undertaker's Druids. Exactly. By the way, hey, we're part of the Shining Wizards Network, so... We might drop some wrestling references in here every once in a while because fuck it. We like wrestling. Yeah, WrestleMania is this weekend. Exactly. Actually, no, by the time people hear this podcast, it's already happened. And I'm just going to oh. say it was great. It was I awesome. Get, I, it was, I was glued to my fucking TV for two days straight. 
<laughs> just didn't even shower, just sat there the whole time, just pissed in a bucket, watched it. Went, went from recording this podcast on a Thursday night, and I didn't do anything until Monday because basically there's wrestling every night between now and Sunday. Exactly. Yeah, they got a lot of indie stuff going on during that whole weekend. And obviously WrestleMania, they got the whole fucking Hall of Fame and NXT events, all sorts of stuff. It's like Christmas for us wrestling fans. I know I'm super pumped because ICW is doing a big thing in New Jersey called the Faces of Death. This sounds gnarly. Go on. And it's just like a bunch of companies. I think it's three companies. It's ICW, H2O, and I think Ruthless Pro Wrestling just doing a bunch of like three days worth of death matches. Well, those wrestlers do need to stay hydrated. Did you but, hear uh, about the guy? Did you hear about Piss Jug Mike? Piss Jug Mike? Yeah, you could usually see him a rest in peace, Piss Jug Mike. Yeah, he passed away last week. He was big in the independent scene, and you could oh. see him in the front row of like a lot of shows at every independent show, pretty much. We met him when we went to New Jersey. He was there. He's the guy that walks around with a jug, a clear jug. For, it's actually just iced tea, but everybody calls him Piss Jug Mike because everybody oh. calls it piss. If he's pissing brown, dude, he's got some problems. He needs to go to the doctor. Well, uh, he is no longer with us, so uh, well, that pour one out for things. Piss Jug Mike. Yeah, uh, I'll use my Ghostbusters tumbler, pour a little water in the ground. We're good to go. Yep. Rest in yeah. peace. Rest in power. Piss Jug Mike. So back to it because we love getting off topic here. So they're having their little AA satanic meeting, reading from some passages, whatever, hanging out, vibing, practicing Satanism. All that stuff. And at the end of it, they're talking to Ian, who's got the gnarliest comb over and neck beard. Fucking hate this guy so much. Oh, you know what? He makes us metalheads look like we're fucking basement dwellers. Dude, he looks like he's straight out of Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, he's got a really fucking weird face. But have you seen him like outside of this movie? He actually looks like a halfway decent person. But what, I don't know what the fuck they did with him in this. Like <laughs> he looked like a leprechaun. Yeah, he was fucking weird looking. He was a weird looking dude. And he gets pretty gnarly towards the end of this movie. He's a fucking weird dude. He was the one that took Satanism way too seriously. Like he probably wanted to be some sort of high priest or something. Dude, there's one scene where he like takes his sneakers off and he cuts crosses into the bottom of his feet. And he's, oh. he's walking and there's just bloody crosses on the ground where he's walking. I thought that was fucking sick. Yeah, it was cool. But like, why? I, I don't know. Maybe he's trying to lure or something to specifically to the circle where they're trying to summon the demon or whatever or trying to get Jackson into the womb. And it was crazy. That scene was nuts. And that's when he was like really going crazy. But there's a lot of stuff we're not talking about. I'm getting up to that point. So... In the movie, obviously Shannon goes missing and they're starting to interview or question the doctor regarding his patient because it seemed like she was supposed to go to the doctors the very day that she went missing. But he gave an alibi for her that, oh, yeah, she was walking down the road and said, I won't be able to make it into the doctor's appointment today type deal. And so this cop keeps coming around. And one time the doctor, he's burying a body because what happened was he's got this neighbor guy coming over to do his snow plowing because the doctor's an old guy. Can't fucking do shit, I'm sure. Other than manhandle the girl into a house and summon demons. That's about what they can fucking do. But they can't shovel at all for some reason. So this guy decides to unalive himself into a snowblower. Which is fucking so gnarly. I don't think a snowblower could actually do that, but it looked awesome. He fucking mulched oh, yeah. himself. He's like, hey, Audrey, how's it going? Hope things are good with Jackson. And he just sticks his face into the snowblower. And yeah. obviously blood just <laughs> flying everywhere. It's like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> he he actually flips a snowblower upside down and dives headfirst <laughs> into it. That reminded me of Tucker and Dale versus Evil. I mean, that was a good movie great movie i'm surprised we haven't reviewed that one yet wasn't there a show not that show there was a silly show it got canceled now i can't remember what it's called it's got i think robert patrick's in it actually oh dude yeah you I know, don't know. From that movie we were gonna review and then you wouldn't let me if people want to watch it go for it they can watch it but i'm just like this is not something fun to talk about i was so ready i'm looking it I up right now because now i'm curious it was a show it was a comedy 
Oh, it was a. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? What I show? I'm bad about watching shows. You it watched... was very similar to Tucker and Dale. Oh, was it? Oh God, I can fuck with that then. I don't know. I'm gonna have to find the name of it because I can't remember. Yeah. So yeah, he unalived himself. There's a whole bunch of that in this movie. So essentially, that happens. He's burying the body. Police officer calls him saying, "Hey, we should talk. Maybe come down to the police station." He's like, "Oh, I'll be there tomorrow." And she's actually like, "Oh, well, time is of the essence. I need you in the police station as soon as possible." And he's like, "Well, I can't do that. It's not possible. I'm, you know, I'm working with patients. Of blah blah blah. Some sort of doctor type excuse. Whatever." And she's just says to him actually i'm in the area i'll just stop by so he's running back to get to the house in time for the detective as soon as he gets into the house detective's got her gun drawn because she sees that shannon is tied up to the bed audrey's on the ground with her hands behind her back and Corey, you know what i'll let you take the lead on this one what exactly happens after the doctor comes in is this the part when the what's her face shoots herself in the chin Yes. Yeah, that <laughs> I did not see that coming. I'm not, I don't want to laugh, but at the same time, it was just so fucking absurd. Yeah, because so she's she like, just pulls a gun out and fucking, and it's completely like not random, but it just happens all of a sudden. She just puts a gun to her chin and pulls the trigger, and just brain matter spraying everywhere. And that's not the only time that you see her do it because. They fucked with the dead people, mm -hmm. so she keeps showing up throughout the rest of the movie, so they'll just randomly see this girl shooting herself in the chin over and over and over again. It's like an infinite loop. She just comes into the room, shoots herself, dies, obviously, and somehow just gets dragged out of the room. And I think she's just dragging her own body out, and then she comes back and does it again. And they even said, this has been happening all night. <laughs> It's so bad. I can't imagine just having to relive that over and over again. Uh, you know, and at some point they're just like, oh, this is like more of a nuisance than it's fucking scarring. It's like fucking pesky kids like late at night doing fireworks every single night. You get pissed off. And then at some point you're like, oh, they're just doing it again. Whatever. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that. So we never talked about weird contortionist guy. Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about this guy. Troy James is his name. I've seen him in movies doing this crazy contortionist stuff. I guess that's his shtick. He's always been known for being a contortionist in movies. But he was straight fucking nightmare fuel. You're trying to tell me that that was a real person and not like CGI or anything? That was a real fucking person. How does a body twist the way he was doing it? I don't fucking know, man. I've seen some contortionists in person, though, and they do some crazy stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, how your spine should be breaking in half right now. What's happening? Mm -hmm. This guy, in the way he was introduced was so insane because Shannon's trying to get out of oh, the bed. Yeah. You remember this, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. When he comes out from under the bed. Yeah, because she leans over and she sees a head. So I'm thinking, fuck, did they kill someone else and it's like a decapitated head by her bedside? Okay, fair enough. It's a logical thing to think of. But nope, of course, he's got all this plastic wrap over his face and she sees the head and he just lets out that breathe like like the <clears throat> like that. And then all the noises, yeah. Yeah, and he starts doing his contortionist shit. And I'm like, oh, oh my god, because it's yeah, that was practical effects. We'll call that practical effects because that's an actual person doing those things. Wow. I'm going to like rewatch that scene because now that I know it's a person, I can get even more disgusted watching it. Oh, yeah. Like it creeped me out because they added the bone cracking in there, obviously in post. Because if you're a contortionist, at some point, you're used to that. Your bones aren't freaking cracking or your cartilage isn't cracking like crazy. It's how your body is. That's who you are. So they added all that shit in post, and she, all you hear is... I'm like, oh, God, I hate every single sound that's happening right now. Yep, definitely gross. Yep. And so naturally, he's doing his contortionist thing. He hops on the bed, and he straight bites into this girl's stomach, trying to get to the child. It was, it was <sighs> fucking nuts. It was nuts. Yep, yep. <laughs> that biting thing got me. I was waiting for them to show like when he bit into her, like pulling away flesh or something. It never happened, but I thought it was coming. Mm -hmm. I thought it was coming too. I was fully expecting bloodshed, just biting into her and just like eating into her stomach or something. But 
It didn't happen. I think he basically maybe just broke skin a little bit because he had the freaking plastic wrap on his face anyway, so he probably couldn't get through all of it to get to the stomach. But crazy, crazy, crazy. So, so what about the flossing ghost that was flossing her fucking teeth out? Like, that's Dude, happened to me before in dreams. I hated anything teeth, teeth and well, eyes. It just When they showed her walking down like a set of stairs and you could hear the things hitting the ground, but you didn't know what they were at that time. Yeah. And then, and then the camera just zooms in on this fucking ghost, literally flossing her own teeth out of her head. Yeah. I will say this, her fucking gums are probably clean as fucking anything. Yeah, she did it again later in the movie, too. Yep. No gingivitis for that one. Mm, no, 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 no teeth, no nothing left. Yeah. Like if she went to the dentist, the dentist would be like, no, you're, you're great. Keep the keep up the flossing. You're good to go. Yeah. You never have to come back. Yep. Just just keep doing what you're doing. We'll see you in a decade because that, that they are so adamant on flossing. Like I said, I have a thing when it comes to teeth and eyes. So I'm seeing the ghost in the background as Henry's waking up. So he thinks it's Audrey just flossing her teeth, whatever. And Audrey calls to check on and see if he needs something. And that's when we find out, okay, that's not Audrey. That's something else. I don't know who this ghost was, but when I saw the friggin' the flossing, I was I obviously immediately grossed out. And then as I saw the teeth dropping, I'm like, Ugh. yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's ready to throw up. Well, yeah. I was gagging. Oh, yeah, I was ready to lose it at that point. Yep, I was like, there were times where I'm pausing. I'm like, I think I need a second. I'm gonna go do a couple things and come back to this because not I, a lot, of, not a lot of things like make me feel ill, but that one did. Yeah, that was a fucking crazy ghost. I don't like, even know. The, the makeup was amazing. The makeup was fantastic. No CGI on that. It looked great. The makeup was great. And the budget on this, I don't think was crazy or anything, but what they did with this budget, they worked wonders, clearly, because I thought everything looked great. Yeah, the budget for this had to have been, I mean, it took place for the most part one place. Yeah. Yeah. There were I mean, several people in the cast, but half of them were covered in makeup the whole movie. Yep, covered in makeup or doing their contortionist shit. I hate this guy, Ian, so much. I'm looking oh, at the guy who played him on IMDb right now. Oh, dude, he sucks. Ian fucking sucks. He did the whole thing where he made himself seem like he's this super professional, knows exactly what to do when it comes to Satanism and blah, blah, blah. And he's saying to Henry, I can undo everything and we can get Jackson into the womb and he needs $10,000 or whatever. And then you see like a few scenes later... Oh, by the way, dropping dead mice around the house. I thought that was interesting. I don't know what the hell the deal was with that. Yeah, never really uh, talked about it or explained it. Yeah, it was just like, oh, yeah, just place one right there and right there. And I'm thinking to myself, where are you getting all these dead mice? I don't know, man. They're ghost mice. Ghost mice. That's right. I don't know if they use that to maybe just keep the demons at bay for like five seconds or maybe they're feeding them. I don't know. Could have gone either way. That wasn't explained. Thought it was weird. Also, the idea of holding a dead mouse in your hand, that kind of grosses me out because I'm a bit of a germaphobe. Holding a dead mouse in your hand grosses you out? Is that what you said? Yeah, I don't like That's gross. You don't know what the fuck that thing died from. It's like, oh, you know what? I'll just pick up a dead mouse. Could have fucking all sorts of bacteria and viruses on it. I don't know. We no, probably you're not can't wrong. Get there. Yeah, I'm not wrong. That's like I watched... I watched a TikTok video the other day of someone getting bit by a squirrel, and it was hilarious. Oh, God. But yeah, you don't know what the fuck the squirrel has. They probably, I don't know, do squirrels get rabies? I'm sure. Yeah. Any wild animal, I think, can, really. Yeah, something like that. I'm sure that any freaking animal can probably get rabies. I don't want to fuck with them, obviously, if it does. But either way, Ian sucks. I don't like his look. I don't like his attitude. He's living with his mother in the basement, making us metalheads look like we're a bunch of fucking idiots. So he's reading through his fucking Necronomicon, if you will, whatever you want to call it, Satanist book. And his mother's just trying to feed him dinner. And she's like, honey, you coming upstairs for dinner? And he's like, I'm not fucking hungry. And he's trying to sound like he's British or some shit. And I'm just like, dude, what do you, where the fuck do you live? You're not in England. Dude, Ian sucks. Oh, yeah. He sucks. He's like the worst character in this whole movie, but he makes sense. You have to have someone so shitty to die in such a hilarious fashion. What happened? Oh, OK. So let me give you a little refresher on what happened here. So Ian told Henry to put down a line of salt to keep. Oh, he... mm -hmm. 
Okay, yeah, so you know. Okay, to keep, like, the demons at bay. And then he poured, like, some sort of liquid, I'm assuming blood, on top of the salt to strengthen it to really reduce or hold them back a little bit more. Because what was happening is the ghosts constantly unaliving themselves couldn't get past that salt, so they just kept doing it at the salt line and then just kept getting dragged back. That's where we're going into that infinite loop with that freaking ghost. So here's where Ian fucked up. So Ian was walking in and he broke the line by dragging his fucking feet or something, being an idiot, and he didn't realize that he broke the seal. So he's doing his whole Satanist thing. He's got his bloody feet with the crosses going on. He's making the footprints. He's going all sorts of fucking off the wall crazy doing his thing. And the hilarious fashion is this random ghost comes running in, grabs him and drags him out of the room. So you don't know what happened with him until like a few minutes later. So Shannon manages to get out because Ian stabbed Audrey because he's like one dead mother is all we need type deal because he needed either Shannon to die or Audrey to die. He just needed a mother to sacrifice to bring Jackson into the world. Okay, so here's the hilarious fashion. Shannon's in bed. She manages to get out after Audrey is stabbed and Henry is killed. She gets out. She goes down the stairs and the ghost that dragged him out of the bedroom is on the stairs and whacking off. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, maybe Ian got killed by this ghost and the ghost is just whacking off on him. I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? He's because he's standing in the corner. He's fucking whacking off. And then as Shannon is running away, the ghost runs after her and she gets out of there. But that's the first thing I noticed when she was coming down that stairs is the ghost is up against the wall. You don't see Ian, though, but you just assume that Ian's underneath what the ghost is doing. So (laughs) Ian was getting teabagged by this ghost? Yeah, I'd probably just beat off on. <laughs> freaking... good, old, good old facial from a ghost. All right. Yeah, good old mammal sauce. I'll take care. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, a I'm throwback right there. A little crotch duster action. But yeah, he's probably giving him his mammal sauce, his fucking, I don't know, baby batter, whatever you want to call it. Mammal like, sauce. <laughs> mammal sauce. So- I like mammal sauce. The, the word mammal sauce. We'll go with that. So dropping mammal sauce on Ian. He's probably not even dead. He's probably just getting fucking aggravated by this masturbating ghost. That's how Ian, I'm assuming, died, was just drowning in semen. Imagine drowning in semen. Like, what the fuck? It can be awful. There's Bukaki, and then there's drowning in semen. I think I created a new death metal band name. There you go. Done. Buka- drowning in semen? Yeah. Mm, I'm sure that's some more gore grind band, maybe. All right. I am almost sure of it. I'm sure I'm not the only one who fucking thought of that idea. I don't even want to think of that idea. Nah, why am I, why why I side bringing band. it up? I don't know. I don't uh, know. That's f- weird shit happens on this when we get together. Yeah, I know. I, what happens is my brain just starts go, 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 go. And all of a sudden, here we are talking about fucking dead kids and people drowning in semen. I feel like you got to put a clip of a mammal sauce in the episode once you edit this so people understand where that came from. Yeah, oh yeah. So listen up, motherfuckers. (laughs) I got something I need to say. (laughs) If you don't use mammal sauce, you might as well be gay. Yeah. This is not coming from us. This is coming from the band Crotch Duster. We're just letting you know. But I might put something at the end of the episode, giving people a little idea of what the hell Crotch Duster is. When I have a party, I spike the drinks. Oh my god. Crotch Duster. They're banned, everyone. You'll hear it at the end of the episode after our whole fucking spiel. So anyways, after masturbating ghost, she tries to run out and she runs into the police officer who once again unalives herself in her presence. And then naturally after that, she gets out of the house, runs to a car and she runs into the guy who jumped into the snowblower. His face is all mashed up naturally, but these ghosts are just constantly coming back to life. From what I gather, they're just like on an auto repeat. Why does Shannon see the ghosts? You know, that's a good She's call. She's not the one that fucked with them. No, she didn't fuck with them. But something at the beginning happened where she was able to see Jackson right off the bat. And I don't know if she was basically just the chosen one. I think that's how they went about it was 
thinking that she was the chosen one and she was able to see Jackson. So they know that she's going to be the one to have Jackson inside her womb. So I think with that, they confirmed like, okay, this is the exact person we need for the host. But other than that, there was really no reason as to why she should even see these ghosts. It just happened. Mm, I need a sequel. Yeah, I think we need a continuation to try to figure out what the hell happened. Listen, Justin Dick, make a sequel. Yeah, we need answers. There's answers we need. Because I, I, like well, a prequel Shannon or something. Shannon survived, so. Yeah, Shannon survived and she got the hell out of there. But one thing we didn't bring up as to why Jackson needed to even be brought back to life anyways. And what happened was their daughter got in a car accident and Jackson was in the car with her. So Jackson died. The daughter survived, but became a quadriplegic and it was very difficult, obviously, for the parents to take care of her. And one day their daughter just unalived herself and they said, we couldn't bring back our daughter because we're not able to, which I'm assuming, right, which I'm assuming is because she unalived herself. Whereas, she yeeted herself down a staircase. Was it a staircase or was it the elevator they used? Oh, yeah. She was in that chair thing and she just dipped. She decided she had enough. Yep. Just yeet. Just dropped herself down the fucking elevator. So that happened. They can't bring her back. I'm assuming because when you kill yourself, you go straight to hell type deal. I think at least that's what the Bible says. But yeah, they said they couldn't bring her back. But Jackson naturally died because of the accident. So it's not like he unalived himself or anything like that. He was just an innocent child. So I think they were able to try to bring the child back because of that reason. But Corey, Google Timer has been off for some time now. I think we can get into what we thought. Would he give anything for Jackson for a review? This gets four out of five dead kids from me. I did like the slow burn. It was definitely a slow burn. I felt like a lot of it, nothing happens until like the middle of the movie, really. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I had that big scene in the beginning, but the slow burn was nice. Made the whole film more terrifying, I thought. Mm -hmm. It didn't rely on jump scares. was really only one that I can remember. And the imagery and the sound design again in this one was fucking incredible. And yeah, I really did enjoy this movie. It wasn't perfect, but it's definitely a hidden gem that I think a lot of horror fans should check out. Yeah, I do. Like like The Exorcist and stuff like that, you'll love this. Exactly. If you like The Exorcist and you're big into movies that have to do with religion, like your stigmatas, your exorcist, things like that, this movie will be right up your alley because I was entertained the whole entire time. Is it perfect by any means? No, but... I'm going to give it a 4.25 out of 5 because I was entertained. I was definitely sucked into this movie. But there are some things that just weren't answered for us. We were a little confused by how they were able to muscle a girl into a house when they're freaking elderly and things like that. So there were things that just weren't answered for us. But overall, I thought it was a fucking great movie. And I'm glad you recommended it to me. Yeah, it's like I said, it's been on my watch list on Letterboxd for quite some time now. and. I'm glad we finally did an episode on it because I love this. I really can't wait to watch it again. Maybe pick out things that I missed the first time. Mm -hmm. I think this is one of those movies that needs more than one viewing. I agree because there are some things that I missed that maybe we didn't even talk about. Maybe we can post it on social media, like a little bit of a further review, additional review. I don't know. Maybe a different episode. Kind of like how we were talking about doing an extended episode of The Menu way back. But oh, we we'll also talked about with the new Outwaters memory cards that came out. Oh, yeah, we did talk about that. So that might be something we're going to have to talk about. Maybe next episode we'll review the additional Outwater cards that were released on Screenbox. So I definitely recommend checking this movie out. I thought it was great. I got sucked in. I'm going to watch it again because, yes, I need clarification on some things. But it had humor to it. It had humor and horror and gore, and it was smart, I thought. It was unique. I felt like I was watching something a little different. Uh, Yeah, for me, it took a while to realize that all these things that kept happening were, they were ghosts. Like, I didn't, I don't know, I didn't realize that there were ghosts right away. Not until at least maybe the thing crawled out from under the bed. Yeah, that fucking thing was a ghost, per se, but it still had effect onto the real world. Because obviously he was able to bite the girl. So he had that kind of teetering between the the spiritual world and the real world. So they were like half ghost entities, maybe a ghost. I don't know. I I think you're either a ghost or you're not. Yeah. I mean, sounds about right. 
This yeah, ain't no half and half shit. Yeah, no, no half and half shit. You know, maybe with ghosts, you're either dead or alive. Sometimes dead is better. <laughs> Ooh, nice reference. All right. I think we can wrap it up here. Definitely recommend checking out anything for Jackson. If you want to check it out, it's a Shutter exclusive. If you don't have Shutter, it's fucking pennies on the dollar a month. <laughs> it's fucking real cheap. It's literally like four bucks a month. So four dollars. It's like the cup of coffee. Mine is a little bougie. We've discussed this over and over, but it's dirt cheap. Get the service. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend this movie. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Especially YouTube. We post stuff all the time, including past episodes. Be sure to leave us a five-star review and whatnot on all podcast platforms so we can get some more exposure. And of course, be sure to tell your friends because who knows? Maybe your friends will be interested in 30 Screams or Less podcast. We're also a part of the Shining Wizards Network. Visit ShiningWizardsNetwork.com. They got all sorts of different podcasts on there from wrestling to us naturally and everything in between. So definitely visit ShiningWizardsNetwork.com. Check it out. See if you find a podcast that is also up your alley other than 30 Screams or Less. And visit us on 30ScreamsOrLess.com for all previous episodes and transcripts to go with those episodes. So if you want to actually read what the hell we're talking about, it's there. Definitely check it out. And if there's anything you want us to review, send us an email to 30 screams or less at gmail.com or hit us up on social media, you know, slide in our DMs or something. Corey may uh, say, fuck off. We're not watching that movie, but who knows? <laughs> I will not do that. No, he won't do that. Never. He's good about it. No, never. We're good about taking that uh, advice. We have this whole list set up and this time, anything for Jackson, crossing that off the list of God knows how many we have. Everyone, I'm Steve. I'm Corey. And thanks again for listening to 30 Screams or Less.